Commission. The regular meeting for the Aurora City Council for Monday, April 8, 2024 is called to order. Would the clerk please call the roll? Mayor Kaufman? Here. Councilmember Bergen? Here. Councilmember Coombs? Present. Councilmember Gardner? Here. Councilmember Hancock? Here. Councilmember Jurinski? Here. Councilmember Lawson? Here. Councilmember Medina? Here. Councilmember Murillo? Present. Councilmember Sundberg? Here. Mayor Pro Tim Zavonik? Announcement uh, for the public call in line. City Council welcomes feedback from the public on both matters appearing on the agenda and during public invited to be heard. If you would like to speak and have not already spoken to an operator, please press star three. For those watching on channel eight, call 855-695-3475 and press star three when connected. You will hear a prompt confirming you're in line to speak to an operator and then be able to continue listening to the meeting. When the operator comes on the line, please be ready to give them your name and agenda item you wish to speak on. Keep in mind you must press star three before the city clerk reads the title of the item you wish to speak on. Finally, as a reminder, council does not allow comments about any item on the agenda during public invited to be heard. Each speaker is allowed three minutes and public invited to be heard is limited to one hour in total. El Consejo Municipal Perdón, el Consejo Municipal de la Ciudad de Aurora da la bienvenida a la opinión de sus habitantes y otros vecinos en asuntos comparecientes en la agenda y durante la invitación a la audiencia. Esta sesión tiene disponible interpretación en español. Por favor, háganos saber si usted necesita este servicio. Recuerde que el Consejo no permite comentarios de la audiencia mientras se dirigen asuntos de la agenda del día. Por favor, confirme su turno y espere a la invitación para Comentario público. Gracias. And please join me in an invocation. Oh Lord, our God and our Father, we come to you and we ask that you would look upon this particular gathering tonight to keep us safe and guide us in our decisions. Bless our city with honorable citizens, industry, and sound education and good government. Unite our community together, even though we come from different backgrounds. We pray that there be justice and peace in our city. Give the city council and citizens the wisdom, direction, and sensitivity to the business and proceedings before us tonight. Hear us, therefore, as we commit this meeting to the help of the community. Amen. Land acknowledgement. The city of Aurora acknowledges that we gather on the territories and ancestral homelands of the Cheyenne, Ute, Arapaho, and Lakota peoples past and present. We also recognize the 48 contemporary tribal nations that are historically tied to the lands that make up the state of Colorado. Indigenous peoples have remained committed to the stewardship of this land over many centuries. As these words of acknowledgement are spoken and heard, the ties that these nations have to their traditional homelands and to their vital place in the ecosystem are renewed and reaffirmed, and we are called to be better stewards of the land we inhabit as we continue to work to meet the needs of our entire community. Uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Executive session update. Uh, during a executive session, uh, there was discussion of, uh, of litigation matters, of union negotiations, property land acquisitions, uh, and uh, personnel matters. Uh, motion is in order for the adoption of the minutes from March 11, 2024. Mayor. Councilmember Bargain. Um, motion to approve the minutes from March 11th and March 25th. <laughs> it's been moved by Councilmember Bergen, seconded by Sunberg. Councilmember Sunberg to approve the minutes for March 11th and March 25th, 2024. Uh, discussion? 
Uh, call for the question on the approval of the minutes from March 11th and March 25th, 2024. Mayor Kaufman? May I vote yes. The motion passes to adopt the minutes for March 11th and March 25th, 2024. Uh, National Donate Life Month proclamation, Council Member Sunberg. Please come forward if you're a part of the National Donate Life proclamation. This topic has affected me both personally and relationally with people I know. About 14 years ago, I started to lose my vision to where I couldn't recognize people this far away. I couldn't drive my motorcycle anymore. I couldn't drive down the road and turn off at the right street because I couldn't read street signs anymore. And my quality of life was rapidly declining. I had a disease called keratoconus, a cone shaping of my corneas and Corrective vision, I've been wearing glasses since I was in first grade, wouldn't work anymore, contacts wouldn't work anymore. I was told I had to have a cornea transplant. And when I learned that one day, I remember going back to my car after visiting the doctor and just crying at the intensity of what needed to happen. So I finally pulled the trigger on it, did it, had uh, one eye done and another eye done 13, 14 months later. And now I have 20-20 vision in this eye with corrective vision. And this one's deliberately underpowered. And I've also known people who had needed a liver transplant and got it just in time. I, I knew of a young baby being born from our church that needed a heart upon birth and received a heart. And uh, this is a difficult thing to say, but imagine if you're a parent and your child at a young age passed away, but you were able to take a stethoscope and put that stethoscope on the chest of another child that took your baby's heart and listened intently and longly and hear that heartbeat and what it would do for you. I've seen that with my own two eyes and it's very heartwarming. So here we are, I'll test my new eyes. <laughs> Whereas April 2024 is the 21st National Donate Life Month to raise awareness about organ, eye, and tissue donation. Encourage Americans to register. Are you registered, Daniel Jarinski? <laughs> As donors honor those who have saved and healed lives through the gift of donation, and whereas Colorado has been one of the leaders in the nation with a donor registry of 66.21% of driver's license and ID card applicants signing up to be organ and tissue donors, a decision that reflects a deep commitment to one another and confirms there is good in all of us, and whereas one donor can save up to eight lives through organ donation and save and heal more than 75 lives through tissue donation. And whereas a record 370, excuse me, 307 heroic organ donors provided 918 life-saving transplants in 2003, which is a 10.6% increase from 2022. And Donor Alliance recovered tissue from transplant from 1,703 heroic tissue donors saving and healing with nearly 144,000 tissue grafts and whereas registering gives back hope back to the nearly 1,300 people waiting for a life-saving organ transplant in Colorado and Wyoming while compassionately celebrating donors and their families for the gift of life. Whereas Aurora, as the first city in Colorado and the second in the nation to be a Donate Life community, recognizes owner, eye, and tissue donation would not be possible without our community coming together, saying yes to being an organ, eye, and tissue donor. You are not just checking a box, you are saving and healing lives. Now therefore, I, Mike Kaufman, Mayor of the City of Aurora, Colorado, do by proclaim April 2022 as National Donate Life Month. Would you like to say a few words? Yes, I would, Councilman. Thank you very much, and Mayor and the City Council. Thank you for your ongoing support for organ, eye, and tissue donation in the community of Aurora for making a difference every single day in the lives of many. Everything from the Aurora TV station doing what they can do to help educate the community to this council and the Mayor, you're making a difference. So thank you very much. Thank you for all you do. Uh, 
a United States Air Force veteran and City Council Member Stephanie Hancock for the proclamation uh, month of the military child. Is there any representatives here to receive this proclamation? Please come on down. Wow. Please follow you guys in right here. Oh, all right. Oh, just bring it on there. Oh, there you go. Look at this. Oh, good to see you. Fine looking group. Fantastic. Come on up, kiddos. Whereas since 1986, military installations around the world have recognized the sacrifices and applauded the courage of military children by celebrating the month of the military child throughout the month of April, and whereas each day military children undergo unique challenges which they face with resilience and dignity beyond their years, and whereas it is essential to recognize that military children make significant contributions to the country while dealing with uncertainty and concern for their parents, and whereas the high demand for family responsibility that military children accept takes courage and strength as they serve the nation along with their parents, and whereas our men and women in uniform cannot focus on the mission or challenges ahead if they are concerned about their children at home, and whereas the Department of Defense strives to provide a safe, nurturing environment for military children to enable a stronger and more resilient fighting force, and whereas Whereas the month of the military child reinforces this concept, reminds the nation that service members' children also serve, and allows communities to share their gratitude for the service of military children. Now, therefore, I, Mike Kaufman, Mayor of the City of Aurora, Colorado, do hereby proclaim April 2024 as Month of the Military Child, and in witness thereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the City of Aurora, Colorado to be affixed this eighth day of April 2024. Thank you so much for your service. Would you like to say something? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, as a representative of the Veterans Affairs Commission in Aurora, I'm proud to accept this proclamation on behalf of military children serving at Buckley Space Force Base. Um, but beyond the base, we have reservists, guardsmen, uh, all kinds of people out here whose children are uh, supporting them in their military service um, every day. As a father of three, I've been there. So this time, I'd like to present this to Colonel Dexter, the base commander. Mayor Kaufman, city leaders, um, constituents of Aurora, on behalf of Team Buckley um, and all of the children that serve um, as part of Buckley Space Force Base, we just want to thank you for this recognition um, in accordance with April being the month of the military child. So thank you so much for your continued support. Well, former um, uh, a Parks, Recreation, and Open Space employee and council member, uh, now Ruben Medina, uh, for Aurora Arbor Week proclamation.
Whereas, is this on? Whereas Friday, April 19th, 2024, is designated as Colorado Arbor Day. And whereas the observance of Arbor Day creates an awareness among citizens of the roles that trees play in our day-to-day -day lives. And whereas the city of Aurora has been certified as the Tree City USA by the Arbor Day Foundation for the 40th year in honor of its commitment to effective urban forest management. And whereas trees provide shade, control erosion, increase property values, beautify our neighborhoods, and enhance the economic viability of business areas. And whereas to celebrate the significance of trees in our community and to celebrate Arbor Day, the city of Aurora will plant trees at Aurora Reservoir to celebrate the expanse and vigor of Aurora's urban forest. Now, therefore, I, Mike Kaufman, Mayor of the City of Aurora, Colorado, do hereby pro proclaim the week of April 15th, 2024, through April 20th, 2024, as Arbor, Aurora Arbor Week. In witness that whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the City of Aurora, Colorado, to be affixed this eighth day of April, 2024. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Murillo, and thank, or thank you, Councilmember Medina, yeah, and Council Member <laughs> Mayor Kaufman, for this proclamation. Yeah. Thank you for recognizing the City of Aurora's Arbor Day celebration, it being our milestone year of our 40th year. So the Tree City USA program began in 1976, and Aurora was quickly <laughs> given that recognition in 1984. So we're one of the cities in Colorado that's been a, Arbor, a Tree City USA for the longest amount of time. So thank you again for your proclamation. Thank you. Councilmember Daniel Dorinsky, uh, Chair of Public Safety and Courts Policy Committee for the National Public Safety Telecommunications Week Proclamation. Oh, there's a whole bunch of you here to accept this award. I was just gonna call for you. <laughs> Uh. Well, hi guys, hi. whole crew, Tina, hello. Okay, whereas when an emergency occurs in Aurora, the prompt response of police officers, firefighters, emergency medical professionals, and clinicians is critical to the protection of life and preservation of property. And whereas the safety of our police officers, firefighters, emergency medical professionals, and clinicians depends upon the quality and accuracy of information obtained from residents and visitors who contact Aurora 911. And whereas emergency communication specialists are the first and most critical contact our citizens have with emergency services and serve as the first responders by providing immediate life-saving instructions to those who are in danger, have experienced physical injury, or who are experiencing a medical emergency. And whereas emergency communication specialists are the single vital link for public safety professionals in the field by coordinating their activities through radio communications and advanced technologies, providing them information and ensuring their safety. And whereas emergency communication specialists of Aurora 911 have contributed substantially to the apprehension of criminals, suppression of fires, and treatment of patients, and whereas the members of Aurora 911 have exhibited compassion, empathy, and professionalism during the performance of their duties in the past year. Now, therefore, I, Mike Kaufman, Mayor of the City of Aurora, Colorado, do hereby proclaim the week of April 14th through the 20th, 2024, as National Public Safety Telecommunica Telecommunicators Week. I did? <laughs> oh, well, you look beautiful. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Council Member Jurinsky, uh, Mayor Kaufman, and all of Council. Um, I just want to extend on behalf of Aurora 911 our heartfelt thanks and gratitude to all of you. For the last four years, we have been working diligently to restore our team to to strengthen the level of service we provide to the community, and we look forward to the future. We have great things in store, and we can't wait to share that with everyone. For all of you, we are here because we are called to serve. It is an honor for every member of our organization to play a role in serving each of you to meet you where you are in the moments when you need help the most, 
in order to connect you with the resources that you need in the moment. That is our life calling, and that is why it is so incredibly special for us to be able to celebrate this week, because not only are we celebrating the honor of our industry and our career, but we're also excited and celebrating what we look forward to in the future as we grow and evolve and serve you better than ever before. So thank you. Being a partner to us is um, everything. I also want to say thanks to our partners, um, Chief Morris, Chief Otten, Thank you for being here in support of us today. We are one team and none of us make it without the other. So thank you so much for being here to support us today. Councilmember Coombs uh, for the proclamation um, for Eid al Fatir. Okay, and so we have some folks uh, from our Aro Muslim community here to accept this proclamation um, for Eid al-Fitr in the year 2024. Whereas Islam is the second largest religion in the world with 1.9 billion devotees worldwide and over 3.5 million in the United States, as well as the fastest growing demographic in the United States and Whereas Aurora is home to a thriving and rapidly growing Muslim community, and Aurora Muslims are one of the most ethnically and racially diverse groups in the city of Aurora, comprising African Americans, Africans, Latinos, Asians, Arabs, and Caucasians. And whereas Aurora Muslims are teachers, doctors, engineers, social workers, and small business owners, all of which contribute to the economic and social success of our city, and whereas the diversity of Aurora is one of our city's greatest strengths, and the contributions of Aurora's Muslim community contribute greatly to the strength and vitality of our city, and whereas Eid al-Fitr is an opportunity to celebrate the conclusion of the month of Ramadan, an opportunity in which the Muslim community of Aurora hopes that the people of all faiths and no faith will reflect on the goals of Ramadan by remembering that fasting is about more than restraining from food and drink. It is also about promoting empathy, good character, fellowship, and time with loved ones and family. And whereas Eid al-Fitr celebrates many virtues, including spiritual devotion, acts of charity, and the deepening of one's self-discipline. These values can be embraced by all people, regardless of background, religion, or circumstance throughout the year. And whereas, on behalf of the city of Aurora, Colorado, at the conclusion of Ramadan, it is with immense pride and honor that I recognize the contributions of Aurora Muslims on Eid al-Fitr. Therefore, I, Mike Kaufman, mayor of the city of Aurora, do hereby proclaim April 10th, 2024 as Eid al-Fitr, in witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Aurora, Colorado to be affixed this 10th day of April, 2024. Thank the council, um, Mayor Kaufman, and especially council members uh, Coombs and Medina for recognizing our holiday of Eid al-Fitr, uh, our, uh, our faiths and values, and, hmm, sorry. I'll start again. I wanna thank the council, the mayor, and especially uh, council members Coombs and Medina for recognizing our holiday of Eid al-Fitr, and also wanted to, to thank the efforts uh, of the community um, towards the, um, in having this, uh, sorry, 
our faith and values and the Aurora Muslim uh, community's contributions in, in this proclamation. We hope that this will be a first step towards building on our common and shared beliefs. And in that spirit, we invite our neighbors to get to know us through everyday activities and special events through mosque open houses. Thank you. Public invited to be heard. The first person is Brian Taylor. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Brian Taylor from Endorora BSL and National Dog Rescue Network. Uh, I wanted to make a few points about the readoption of breed legislation that happened last week. I know several members of the council are currently working on future recommendations, and I feel like it's important for some of the context uh, for why we got that decision in the first place uh, to be heard by some of the uh, councilors who might not have been here when that happened. So from 2018 to 2020, the city of Aurora and Aurora Animal Services conducted multiple public studies, uh, reviews, uh, open comments, and uh, 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 invitations to the public uh, to comment on an overhaul and modernization of Animal Code Chapter, th uh, chapter 14 uh, in Aurora uh, Ordinance. Um, there was no superseding of the public will. Uh, the city gave citizens multiple opportunities spanning years to weigh in on what they felt uh, was going to be uh, uh, the best path forward uh, for animal ordinance in Aurora. Uh, they were very clear on how this would affect the 2014 vote as well when doing that. Uh, the response the city got from uh, from the public was overwhelming uh, in support of dangerous dog ordinance uh, being relevant to all dogs regardless of breed. So the precedence of this decision is that any measure adopted through vote can never be modified. Uh, that puts the city in danger of more lawsuits and modifications to ordinance established through vote is not exactly a rarity. Uh, Aurora Animal Services are already already overwhelmed as a result of post-COVID dog abandonment, those numbers are about to swell uh, since increase in breed abandonment is the natural consequence of reenacting this ordinance in the city of Aurora. Uh, with increased abandonment comes an increase in incidents as well as it would for any breed, uh, feeling a narrative that BSL might be uh, helpful in that instance when it's actually the cause of the rise in incidents. Uh, again, short-term consequence is increase in incident due to abandonment. The long-term consequence is the discouragement of people from getting veterinary care, uh, socialization, training, and insurance uh, for incidents that they ever do happen. So here are three key points to this issue and two possible solutions. One, breed legislation doesn't work in any community where it's ever been studied. Uh, there are no shortages of studies supporting that fact. Uh, I would refer the Aurora City Council to review D Denver University's study on the efficacy of Denver Animal Services breed legislation over the last 10 years if you're interested in the why of that too. Uh, two, every city in Colorado has abandoned BSL as bad and often unenforceable policy. There are no reports of any spikes in issues without it in any city. We just saw the bite stats today. Uh, the bite stats are not uh, uh, increased from the lack of BSL here. They're on par with Labrador Retrievers and German Shepherds. Uh, three, every credible professional dog organization uh, in the world, the American <coughs> Veterinary Medical Association, the ASPCA, the Humane Society, the American Kennel Club, uh, the CDC, all of them purport that there are no benefits to community safety for breed-specific legislation uh, when that's enacted. Uh, there are two viable solutions to this problem. One, the city council can appeal the reckless decision, uh, which is unlikely, or two, the city council can revert this measure to the next ballot so that a decade later, the public can vote on an honestly worded measure and get all the facts before making a decision that will only make this issue worse. Uh, thank you for your time. Carlos Velasquez. Hi there. <laughs> Good evening, uh, City Council members. My name is Carlos Velasquez. I'm here today to address uh, breed specific legislation in our community as I'm deeply concerned for the proposed regulations that unfairly. Uh, target specific breeds. Uh, breed specific legislation is not an effective way to address dog related incidents. Um, it unfairly stereotypes and penalizes responsible dog owners based on the breed of their dog. 
um, rather than the individual behavior of the animal. This approach is not uh, supported by leading animal welfare organizations, including the American <coughs> Veterinary Medical Association. Uh, furthermore, studies have shown that uh, breed specific, uh, breed is not a specific reliable uh, per, for dog aggression. Factors such as training, socialization, and owner responsibility play a much uh, bigger role in that. Um, uh, I, we are here today to ask that existing dogs be grandfathered in Aurora and exempt from these regulations unless city council takes uh, steps forward to uh, what, from what the courts just did. Um, additionally, as a community, we have the numbers, power, and effort to take this issue back to ballot. We are committed to advocating for fair and effective dog regulations that prioritize public safety without unfairly targeting specific breeds. Uh, in conclusion, I reject our uh, city council to reject specific breed legislation and instead focus on uh, effective breed neutral solutions that will make our community safer for both uh, people and pets. Thank you. Robbie DeYoung. Mayor, Council, I'm usually here to talk about cars and being stolen. Tonight, I'm going to talk about pit bulls. I happen to own one, and like the shirt says, my pit bull is nothing compared to me. <laughs> okay, I have a couple of things real quick I wanna to touch on. Between 2021 and 2024, when the, uh, the ban was lifted, we actually have less reports of pit bull bites than we had the previous four years. And something that's interesting, according to the stats that I have here, a man coon, no, I'm sorry, a domestic short-haired cat, 199 bites. That's almost twice as many as during that same time period that a pit bull bit. So I think that our original plan that we had where we have uh, dangerous breeds all of them, every one of them, you know, to focus on that and not one specific breed because that's unfair. That is totally and completely unfair. I've got the stats to prove it. Now, you're not taking my dog. I love my dog. He sleeps with me every night. He makes me feel protected. He makes me feel loved. And every morning when it's time to let him out, he comes up and gives me a kiss and a little sniff to let me know I need to let him out. He depends on me as much as I depend on him. Now I'm gonna be a little crasp here but you guys screwed up. Your attorney screwed up. This should never have gotten as far as it did. You all have known that since back in 2001 that um, Mr. Snyder was going to fight this in court. He spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to fight this in court. And I understand the will of the voter but we already have an ordinance that deals with dangerous animals, including cats, by the way. We don't need a breed specific. Don't take my dog. Don't take my dog. Kirk Ma Manzanares.
Good evening. Thank you guys for your service. Thanks to everyone in Aurora that takes part in what goes on in Aurora. What a wonderful day it was to be able to watch the eclipse with friends. And I spent the whole day in Aurora. I woke up, I wanted to write this speech down and type it up and give it to you, but then I just decided to pray about it and let it come from the heart. I live in Terrace Park Apartments, and I've lived there for going on 16 years. And now, although it's not the Taj Mahal, it's not the White House, it's home. It's home to me. And I've had problems over the years with the way that the management company runs it. And I have called and called and called the city of Aurora and Aurora Access and the police department to do something about it. We did start planning as a community to try to do something about it last year. And then it just kind of fizzled out because I think the residents just think that it should be resolved and taken care of by the management company. But there's illegal dumping that goes on all the time, nonstop. You know, all the houses that live within a two, three mile radius of our complex why go pay and drive out to the dump when we can just drive to Terrace Park? It's five blocks from here. And, and there's stolen cars in the parking lot. There's trash everywhere. Um, there's dog poop everywhere. And, you know, even it's, it's gone so far where the lights were out and they weren't fixing the lights. It's dark. And there was prostitution going on inside parked cars in the middle of the evening. I've talked to Heather about it, Miss Morris, the chief of police. I've talked to our PAR officer about it. I've talked to many of you about it. When I was at a breakfast a couple of weeks ago, and Dr. Kiki reached out to me and reached out to Steve, and they cleaned it up, and they fixed the lights, and they went to court, and they got fined. But just this morning, I got up, and I took pictures of the place again, and they're right back to their same old behavior. You know, I, it's just right down the street from here. This is a beautiful city. There's beautiful places all over Aurora. Why does this have to be a dump right in the middle of the city? And, and it, it, it's not only happening there at Terrace Park. I drive out to my friend's house on, on Piccadilly and 11th and, and I see trash everywhere. I see illegal dumping going on everywhere. And I, I just would like you guys to think about, you know, getting it out there and making an ordinance and a law that if you dump in the city of Aurora, then you're going to pay for it. You're going you're gonna to do some jail time, and you're also going to pay to get it cleaned up. You know, I'm sick of people driving out to Aurora and just dumping wherever they want to. So please do something about the illegal dumping within the city of Aurora. Carlos Velasquez. You went? Okay, I'm sorry. Joel Greenberg. Can I see the clock? The three minutes? Can I see it somewhere? Yeah. So I You'll, say you'll be notified when the time's up. Uh, understood. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening, members of council. My name is Joel Greenberg, and I join you on a day of recognition of joys and solemnities. Today, much of our country gazed to the sky for a rare astral gift of an eclipse. This week, two billion people, including seven million Coloradans, will celebrate uh, the Eid to signify the end of Ramadan during a time of incredible global sorrow. I rise to reflect on this upcoming Thursday, which marks 79 years since American soldiers arrived to liberate the Buchenwald concentration camp in Weimar, which imprisoned nearly 300,000 so-called undesirables, including my then 17-year-old grandfather, who had found the corpses of his mother and sister earlier in the war while being transferred between camps. He would eventually build a home in Denver where his three children and seven grandchildren would learn and grow and thrive. My grandfather rarely spoke of his experiences during the war, although he spoke to the Denver Post in the early 1990s about his liberators being the first black people he had ever seen in his life, a segregated regiment of Patton's army. 
Like many aspects of American life at the time, the armed forces were indeed segregated, and nearly a million black soldiers would often be denied the benefits promised by the GI Bill. Descendants of those who survived this atrocity know that we are compelled to speak against further injustices in our world. In this room nearly six months ago, the council asserted that Israel's incursion of Gaza should be discussed and handled by the United Nations and not the city council. There is merit to that perspective, but we live in Colorado's most diverse city. My Overland High School classmates range from Americans with generations of roots here to families who sought refuge from conflicts in Kosovo and Syria, Sudan, and throughout the Americas. We all love this place. I speak nearing the end of Ramadan as a Jewish Auroran. On behalf of our communities of all faiths, religions, family histories, we are grateful to the council for the recognition of the Eid. And I ask those present to continue to seek the truth, to use your voices to pursue peace, even when doing so requires marching in the streets or doing public speaking, and to follow our leaders, like those who spoke earlier from our local masjid present tonight on our collective long march to freedom. Thank you. Tanya Tabachek. Um, good evening, council members and mayor. Um, missed you guys last council meeting. I was on a boat, but I watched you guys from the balcony watching the waves. Um, but my thing today is I just wanted to speak about, um, about to say some things here that I have pulled from articles about the truth is any dog can attack you. From the six pound Chihuahua to the 180 St. Bernard, and a do no dog breed comes with 100% guarantee that it will not, not attack. However, the vast majority of dog attacks come from dogs that have not been well socialized. This means that any an improperly socialized Chihuahua is more likely to attack than a well socialized pit bull terrier. Um, and I just wanted to make some comments about some 10 dangerous dogs that I pulled up. American, of course, American Pit Bull Terrio, but Rottweilers, Dogo Argentino, Doberman Pinscher, Akita, Gold Dog, Perio de Presa, Camarillo, Tosolino, Chow Chow, Cane Corso. Years ago, the German Shepherd was a dangerous dog. Great Dane was a dangerous dog. Um, Dash Hounds, Jack Russell Terriers. I was just listening and I was very upset. I was very, very upset. First of all, I am not, it's not the council's fault. To me, it's the lawyer's fault. The lawyer should have done their due, due diligence on researching this. Um, another thing is, I, I was reading that, I read what Mr. Schneider said. I love animals, I love pit bulls, but I'm concerned for the rural citizen. You know, there's a lot of other things to be concerned about. This is just, Minuscule to the other things, dangerous things, race cars and drugs and other things. So I'm very upset about that. I'm very upset that, you know, like she was saying, her dog, my dog is a Karen Terrier. That's my baby. Animals are not just animals, but they're, they're baby. They're part of your family. And this is very serious. I wish that their, Aurora could just do an injunction or something to coincide, to find time between when this repeal appealed to when it goes into vote. I believe that the lawyer, the council, or someone should have just injunction to have a stay, allow it until the voters have a chance to revote. Because this is just totally un unreal and unacceptable because owners are the ones that are in charge of their dogs. The dogs don't make choices. They're, we have a school behind our house Kids go up to our, our yard, our fence, and throw rocks at our dogs. They don't do anything. They're just minding their own business, and the kids poke at the dogs, and they throw dogs, and they bark and make the dogs bark. Is that my dog's fault? No, it's not. The owners and socialization, so this whole repeal and revamp and not allowing pit bulls, that's your, your, um, you're kind of pinpointing, you're degrading pin, pit bulls. It's not just pit bulls. There's a lot of other animals, and I just totally disagree. Okay, and then we have one person on the call in line. Sheila, go ahead. You have three minutes. Thank you. 
Honorable Mayor and City Council members, my name is Sheila Davis and I'm a longtime Aurora resident who comes to you today with a plea that transcends mere legality. It's a plea for compassion, understanding, and the preservation of the rights of responsible pet owners in our community. The recent decision by a district judge to reinstate a ban on pit bulls strikes at the heart of fairness and justice and it is imperative that we take action to rectify this injustice. Let us first address the misconceptions surrounding pit bull terriers, including the often repeated myth of the walking jaw. These loyal companions have unfairly earned a reputation for aggression and danger perpetuated by unfounded myths that have no basis in scientific fact. The idea of a pit bull having a locking jaw mechanism is a fallacy with no anatomical evidence to support such a claim. In fact, pit bulls have the same jaw structure as any other breed of dog. Furthermore, it is crucial to dispel the myth that pit bulls are inherently more dangerous than other breeds. The truth is that any dog, regardless of breed, has the potential to exhibit aggressive behavior if mistreated or neglected. Punishing an entire breed for the actions of a few is not only unjust, but also counterproductive to ensuring public safety. By reinstating the ban, we are not only depriving responsible families of the opportunity to share their lives with beloved pets, but also perpetuating harmful stereotypes that perpetuate fear and discrimination. We must instead focus on responsible pet ownership and education to promote safety and harmonious communities for both humans and animals alike. I urge you esteemed members of the city council to appeal this decision and stand up for the rights of our citizens and their beloved companions. Let us work together to create policies that are fair, just, and based on evidence rather than fear and prejudice. Let us show compassion and understanding towards all members of our community regardless of breed or species. In closing, I implore you to consider the words of Mahatma Gandhi, the greatness of a nation and its moral progress can be judged by the way its animals are treated. Let us strive to be a city that values compassion, fairness, and justice for all, including our four-legged friends. Thank you for your time and consideration. Okay, and Mayor, we did miss one person, Sabina Lawson. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. My name is Sabina Lawson, and I've been a resident of Aurora since 2017. I was actively involved in the previous campaign against the breed-specific legislation in the city. Over the course of more than two years, we collaborated closely with Council Members. During this time, the city impl implemented the Dangerous Dog Ordinance aimed at safeguarding Aurora residents from aggressive dogs. It's crucial to recognize that any breed can exhibit aggression when mistreated or trained for it. Therefore, having this ordinance was crucial. Uh, we provided data and studies against the BSL. It was not a short and quick process, and the public reached out to the council members to vote. The judge's decision is misguided and should be appealed. Reinstating the ban will not effectively protect us from aggressive dogs. Instead, supporting responsible ownership will. Confining dogs and depriving them from proper socialization and integration into the community will only make the issue reality. Thank you for your time. That was the last person. The uh, motion is in order for adoption of the agenda and uh, uh, it's been requested to that item 12B uh, be removed. Mayor. Uh, Council Member Gardner. Uh, motion to approve the agenda and I would like to uh, table item 11A5 and then also include uh, removing item 12B. Does it include what with 12B, I'm sorry? Removing item 12B. Okay, okay, yeah. very well. Um, um, you see, uh, it's been moved by Council Member Gardner, second by Sumberg. Oh. Uh, Council Member Sumberg. <laughs> Um, discussion? I'm uh, seeing no discussion. Uh, question before us is the adoption of the agenda. Uh, call for the question.
Mayor Kaufman. The mayor votes yes. Council Member Medina. Yes. The motion passes to adopt the agenda with items 11A5 and 12B removed. And the next question before us is the adoption of the consent calendar on motions, item number 10C1 to 10C4. Mayor. Councilmember Gardner. Motion to approve 10C1 through 10C4. Moved by Councilmember Gardner, second by. Coombs. Second by Councilmember Coombs to approve item no, uh, consent calendar uh, motions, item number 10C1 to 10C4. Discussion? Uh, seeing no discussion, call for the question on the adoption of the consent calendar for motions, item 10C1 to 10C4. Mayor Kaufman. Mayor vote yes. Councilmember Medina. Yes. The motion passes to adopt the consent calendar for motions. Next question before us is the adoption of the consent calendar for resolutions and ordinances, item number 11A1 to 11B4. Mayor. Uh, Councilmember Sumber. I wish to poll 11A4. Okay, 11A4. For discussion. Very well. Um, do I vote on the, do we do 11A4 first or do I go? Okay, uh, the question then before us, uh, motion is in order for adoption of the consent calendar. Item number 11A1 uh, through 11A3 uh, and item number 11A5. Mayor. I'm sorry, um, that goes to item number 11B4. Mayor. Council Member Gardner. Motion to approve 11A1 through 11A3 and 11B1 through 11B4. Uh, 11 a 5 and then 11 b 1 to no, 11 a 5 was pulled oh, oh that's right I'm staying corrected so it's 11 a 1 through 11 a 3 11 b 1 through 11 b 4 so we move by councilmember Gardner seconded by Bergen second by councilmember Bergen uh, discussion mayor we have somebody for item 11 a 3 who would like to speak oh okay, okay. Tanya uh, Tabachek Okay. And then Mayor and Council Members, I just wanted to show my support of with the Buckley um, Space Ride Base and how integrated and, and very important they are with us. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, it's been moved by Council Member Gardner, second by Council Member. Who seconded? I did. It's Council Member Bergen uh, to approve the consent calendar. Uh, item number 11A1 to 11A3, um, and then uh, 11B1 through 11B4. Uh, discussion? A call for the question. Councilmember Medina? Yes. Councilmember Coombs? Yes. The motion passes to adopt the consent calendar for resolutions and ordinances with item 11A4 removed. Will the clerk now please read the title to item number 11A4. Item 11A4 is resolution 2024-38, strongly calling on the Colorado Department of Transportation to study and implement a solution for the unsafe traffic conditions on northbound Interstate 225 between East 2nd Avenue and East Alameda Avenue. Councilmember Sunberg. Thank you, Mayor. The reason I'm pulling this is to bring attention to an important safety issue within our city. Uh, if you've driven 225 past Alameda northbound, approaching 6th Avenue, you'll cross uh, over a bridge, 2nd Avenue. And uh, I've been driving that for years and I've noticed an irregularity in the road. And when I see these types of things, I, I look around and, and for that spot, you can see marks and scrapes on the concrete barriers years ago and debris from vehicles that have crashed. And last year in the news, I noticed a story in which there were two accidents in one day killing five people. Uh, let's see, I think there are four of them were teenagers. And I wondered to myself, is that that spot? They were, the accidents were in the same spot. And sure enough, it was at 225 and second. And just last month, uh, some teenagers stole a vehicle, drove at an excessive speed, and I, I need to point out that these accidents are occurring at excessive speeds. That's important to say. 
So a nine, ninth grade, 15 year old student from Central High School passed away last month at this same spot. So in nine months, there have been seven fatalities at this spot. The veteran police officer in Aurora says that for the last six years, this has been a problem spot. CDOT has known about this spot and is conducting a study, which will be done apparently this summer and will award a contract next year sometime to fix the issue sometime. So we call upon CDOT to, well, first we, implore the public to drive safely, but we implore CDOT to shift gears and put the pedal to the metal and get this project fixed because people are dying and it's teenagers who are the majority of the deaths. There have been, um, I think it has been four teenagers out of the seven. So this is simply to call attention to CDOT to please get this fixed. Any comment from staff in terms of communications with CDOT? No, Mayor. Uh, I can't speak to the policy, uh, that would be, okay, good. Good evening, Mayor, City Council, Laura Perry, Deputy City Manager. Over the last week, I've been in several conversations with the Colorado Department of Transportation about this specific project. They've communicated to us that they understand the severity of the current circumstance and that they currently have a project for the bridge joints under design that's planned to be completed this summer, which will then follow on to be uh, procured to bring on a contractor, which will then go under construction next year. We are recognizing the construction schedule. We are jointly meeting with the Colorado Department of Transportation staff to evaluate and implement engineering options as well as other interim measures to ensure that we are increasing the safety of the area to prevent further accidents. Well, thank the staff for their work on this and thank you Council Member Sunberg for bringing this important issue forward. <coughs> Uh, further, uh, motion is in order. Mayor, I move to approve 11A4. Moved by Council Member Sundberg, seconded by? Coombs. Seconded by Council Member Coombs uh, to approve item number 11A4. Uh, discussion? Mayor. Uh, Council Member Coombs. And I just want to add, you know, to the comments that are, have already been made, the young woman who was recently killed in the most recent accident um, was a member of our Mon community um, whose parents came here to the United States, immigrated here to the United States, um, looking for a safe place for their family. And so we do owe it to everyone in our community to provide safety um, and to try to do what we can to avoid um, these things continuing. So thank you, Councilmember Sundberg, for taking this up. Councilmember Bergen. Um, I also just want to emphasize, uh, Council Member Sundberg, you mentioned the excessive speed at that particular point, but it's really important um, that everyone wears a seatbelt as well, and sometimes um, people get lax with that, but um, I believe some of the individuals were ejected from the vehicle, all of them, so um, please wear your seatbelt. Further discussion? I see none. Call for the question on the adoption of 11A4. The motion passes to adopt item 11A4. The clerk now please read the title to um, item number 11B, I'm sorry, uh, to item number uh, 12A. Item 12A is public hearing and consideration of ordinance 2024-11, amending the 2018 comprehensive plan to adopt by reference the Our Parks, Our Places, a plan for Aurora's Parks, Recreation, and Open Space Plan. Public hearing is now open. Presentation by staff. Uh, good evening, Mayor, uh, Council, and others. My name is Daniel Krasnowski. I'm a supervisor with the city's planning department. I am joined by Ryan French with our Parks, Recreation, and Open Space uh, Department. Um, this item is an uh, ordinance to amend the city's comprehensive plan to adopt the PROS uh, master plan called Our Parks, Our Places. Um, this is really the culmination of a, a really lengthy public process and, and, and internal process uh, to develop this plan. Uh, we provided a little bit more comprehensive um, 
a review of this uh, presentation of this at your last study session. So in which case, um, we're here to answer questions. Um, otherwise, um, if the council would like a presentation, um, Ryan can provide that. Is there anybody who wishes to speak on this issue? Yes, Mayor. We have one individual, Tracy Young. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Tracy Young, and um, I'm here tonight to voice my support of the Parks, Recreation, and Open Space Master Plan. As a former city employee, uh, a pros employee for almost 30 years, as a uh, representative of at my current position with a nonprofit uh, partner, the Highland Canal Conservancy, and also as somebody that has lived in the area for uh, 25 years and is an avid user and customer of the parks, trails, and recreation centers in Aurora. Um, I'd like to start by thanking Brooke Bell for her leadership on this project and also Mayor and Council for approving the funding. Um, this is a critical and long um, <laughs> um, effort that needed to be done. Um, I'm a bit biased, but I believe that Aurora has an amazing parks and open space system and recreation system. <laughs> um, but with the, um, with the partnership of the community, it can be even better. And I would say that one of the most incredible pieces of this effort is the, um, the ability and the extraordinary efforts that the staff and the consultant went to to get the voice of the public, of all the Aurora public, and to really listen and then to respect it and incorporate it into the plan. The plan provides an excellent look at today's pros, assets, and challenges, and it also presents the master plan process, outcomes, and recommendations in a way that's really interesting and accessible and easily understood, but also sets you all up and the staff up for making equitable decisions in the future for allocations of all of your available resources. In other words, this plan is not gonna sit on the shelf, which I remember when I left, when I retired two years ago, um, incidentally did not think I was ever gonna have to speak in front of council before, or again. <laughs> But here I am, because tonight's an important decision, and I ask all of you to please support the adoption of the Parks and Recreation Master Plan into the City Comp Plan or replaces. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard on this issue? No. Um, questions of staff? Uh, seeing none, uh, public hearing is now closed. The motion is in order. Mayor, motion to approve item 12A. Second. Moved by Councilmember Jurinski, seconded by Second. Uh, <laughs> Councilmember, seconded by Councilmember Gardner. Uh, discussion? I'm uh, seeing no discussion. Uh, call for the question on the adoption of item number 12A. Councilmember Sundberg? The motion passes to adopt item 12A. Lord, now please read the title of item number 12C. Item 12C is public hearing and consideration of ordinance 2024-13, approving an amended and restated vested rights development agreement between the City of Aurora, Colorado, Lind Lease Horizon LLC, and Holland LLC, containing provisions for vested property right pursuant to Article 68 of Title 24 CRS for certain lands located in Section 1, Township 4 South, Range 66 West of the 6th Principal Meridian, County of Rapaho, State of Colorado. Public hearing is now open. Uh, presentation by staff. Good evening, Mayor, members of City Council. Jacob Cox, Director of Development Services. This is the first amendment to the Horizon Vesting Development Agreement, which would extend the vesting period in Curling Sec to expire in 2025 through 2036. This amendment is being requested by the developer primarily because of certain unforeseen events that occurred that caused unprecedented financial challenges making development infeasible until this time. Uh, the primary changes are as follows. Change the vesting period end date to 2036, March 31st, 2036. This change would allow the city and Lindley's to continue to work together to develop the property. Um, also delete the 300,000 aggregate gross square feet of non-residential 
excuse me, and delete the vesting period extended date. This change would not allow for another extension of the vesting period and that part of the vesting development agreement that reflects an extension would be removed so that it automatically ends on that 2036 date. Um, there's no separate presentation from the applicants. We do have someone here to answer any questions, but I'm also happy to answer questions. Thank you. Is there anybody else who, is there anybody who wishes to be heard on this issue? No. Very well. Uh, questions of staff or the applicant? Mayor. Yep. Councilmember Coombs. Um, so I guess my question is just what kind of, what guarantees do we have that with this extended period, um, the development will be carried out within the time frame set. The, the primary impetus is that they have not developed the commercial that was originally approved in the master plan and, and particularly going back to the recession, the original framework development plan for the property was approved in the 2007 time frame. That was really the kind of one of the leading events that caused kind of those unforeseen financial circumstances. And so the goal, working in conjunction with Lynn Lease, who's been very collaborative with the city, is that it will allow them more time to bring some commercial to market in the area. Thank Further you. questions of staff for the applicant? Uh, Mayor? Uh, Councilmember Sutberg. On 12C, I just want to mention that um, I've met with the developer a number of times and have toured the development and met with partners of his and uh, answered questions about why should they invest in Aurora. And I just want to say that this developer is one of those who really wants to leave a legacy of a really solid community, building community, a walkable neighborhood. There's going to be a pre-K through eight school here, dog park, uh, just wonderful amenities. And this type of developer is the kind that uh, really helps to establish Aurora neighborhoods uh, for the future in, in such a positive way. Further discussion? I mean, further, I'm sorry, further questions of the staff of the applicant? Seeing none, uh, public hearing is closed. Uh, motion is in order. Mayor, motion to approve item 12C. Moved by Councilmember Gardner, seconded by. Jurinsky. <laughs> seconded by Councilmember Jurinsky to approve item number 12C. Uh, discussion? Seeing none, call for the question on the adoption of item number 12C. Council Member Zavonik? Yes. The motion passes to adopt item 12C. Clerk, now please read the top to item number 13A. Item 13A is introduction of ordinance 2024-14, amending article 13 of chapter 102 of the city code of the city of Aurora related to the elected officials and executive personnel defined benefit pension plan. And Mayor, we do have individuals signed up to speak on this item. Okay. Um, What's the order? Alexandra Jackson. Well, there we go. Okay, Tim Babbage. Jamie Jackson. Okay, I guess nobody's here. Very well. Um, um, brief presentation by staff. Hello, I'm Nancy Wishmeyer, City Controller. And the first item is for a proposed city code change to an item related to the General Employees Retirement Plan. And this is due to the passage of the SECURE 2.0 Act. So SECURE 2.0 increased to age 73, the age that retire, or I'm sorry, required minimum distributions have to be made from retirement plans. So basically this code change is reflective of a mandatory internal revenue code change. Very well. Uh, questions of staff? Uh, seeing none, motion is in order. Mayor. Mayor. Motion to approve 13A. Moved by Councilmember Gardner, seconded by? Coombs. Seconded by uh, Councilmember Coombs to approve item number 13A. Discussion? Uh, seeing no uh, further, no discussion, uh, call for the question on the adoption of item number 13A. The motion passes to adopt item 13A. 
clerk now please read the top item number 13B. Item 13B is introduction of ordinance 2024-15, amending article five of chapter 102 of the city code of the city of Aurora, Colorado, relating to the general employees retirement plan and other related matters. A brief and presentation by staff. Mayor, we do have individuals who would like to speak. Oh, very well. Okay. Elizabeth Cadiz. Hunter Parnell. Adam Lior Call. Travis Weiner. Alexandra Jackson. Hashim Coates. Okay, I guess nobody's here. Very well. A brief presentation by staff. And this item is also related to a city code change um, regarding the general employees retirement plan. And this is as a result of the passage of the Secure 2.0 Act. Secure 2.0 increased to age 73, the age that required minimum distributions have to be made from retirement plans. So again, this code change is reflective of a mandatory internal revenue code change. Uh, questions to staff? Seeing none, motion is in order. Mayor, motion to approve 13B. Moved by Councilmember Gardner, uh, <laughs> Councilmember Gardner, seconded by? Jurinsky. Uh, seconded by Councilmember Jurinsky to approve uh, item number um, 13B. Discussion? I see no discussion. Call for the question on the adoption of item number 13B. The motion passes to adopt item 13B. The clerk now please read the top to item number 13C. Item 13C is introduction of ordinance 2024-16, amending section 5102 of the city code pertaining to the composition and membership of the Judicial Performance Commission. Very presentation by staff. Good evening, council. Um, this is brought forward um, ever since, I think um, I've been here almost two years, we've been trying to fill a attorney position with the Judicial Performance Com Commission and we have been unable to fill it. And some of the applicants that we have are highly qualified, but they don't fall underneath the ordinance as it stands now. They move into Aurora, they've been practicing for years um, in another state, or they're in, um, you know, not in the active status. So this allows our community that is here that wants to serve, to be able to serve on this commission, it just changes it so that they can serve or work as an attorney at least five years in any other state. And then once they're in Aurora and they're an Aurora resident, then they could serve on the commission. Um, so we have had two since I've been here that we had to deny because of this limitation. So this would open it up so that we could fill this position. Questions of staff? I'm seeing none, motion is in order. Mayor, Mayor. motion to approve item 13C. Moved by Council Member Jurinsky, seconded by? Coombs. Second by Council Member Coons to approve item number 13C. Discussion? I'm seeing no discussion, call for the question on the adoption of item number 13C. Council Member Zavonica, thank you. The motion passes to adopt item 13C. Could now please read the title to item number 15A. Item 15A is a public hearing and consideration of resolution 2024-40, making certain findings of fact regarding the proposed annexation of a parcel of land located in the southeast quarter of section two and the northeast quarter of section 11, Township 4 South, range 66 West of the 6th Principal Meridian County of Arapaho. Public hearing is now open. Presentation by staff. Good evening, Jacob Cox, Director of Development Services. Um, staff has been made aware of an error on a notice posting associated with the Planning Commission items for the initial zoning, which is typically considered by City Council concurrently with the annexation findings and ordinance. That has since been corrected by the applicants on these items and is scheduled for Planning Commission to make a recommendation to City Council. Therefore, the applicant has requested that public hearing be continued to a date certain, April 22nd, 2024. We ask that both the public hearing for the annexation ordinance and this resolution, items 15A and B are, are continued continued to April 22nd. Questions to staff? Uh, seeing none, is there an applicant? Motion, uh, motion to continue. Mayor. Uh, Council Member Combs. Motion to continue 15A to the 22nd of April. Moved by Council Member Combs, second by? Bergen. Yeah. Yeah. 
Can we, I'm sorry, Mayor, okay. can we uh, amend that motion to include continuing the public hearing? Oh, yes, Thank sorry, um, the public hearing, and that's, can we do A and B together or do we have to do them separately? Yes, together. Okay, oh. then um, motion to continue 15A and 15B, um, including the public hearing to the 22nd of April. Right. Um, is yep. seconded by Councilmember moved by Councilmember Coombs, second by Councilmember Bergen. Discussion on the motion. Uh, seeing none, uh, call for the question on the motion to continue. <clears throat> Mayor Kaufman. Uh, Mayor votes yes. Yes. The motion passes to continue items 15A and 15B, including the public hearing to April 22nd, 2024. Uh, reports. Um, had the opportunity to, um, I think a weekend, uh, two weekends ago, to be with AFR for a 24 hour shift and encourage other uh, members, council members to do it. Uh, it's an extraordinary experience to see all that uh, uh, our firefighters do, and we, uh, uh, the city manager and I were at a, a event um, on Saturday night, uh, an annual awards event for uh, our firefighters, and I think one of the most extraordinary awards that, that are given is the, called the Phoenix Award, and that's when somebody's uh, uh, heart is completely stopped, cardiac arrest, and they're resusc not only resuscitated, but they're neurologically intact. Uh, and it's an extraordinary thing that our, uh, that, that our highly trained uh, firefighters are able to do. Um, Council Member Coombs. Mayor, thank you. Um, so my main report is that I've had the opportunity to visit uh, several mosques and other communities during this month of Ramadan for iftar celebrations. Um, and it's been really wonderful to just see that coming together of community as well as the deepening of people's sense of compassion despite the struggles that they may be undergoing at this time. Um, so thanks to our community for those invitations and for um, opening up their doors uh, to me as a leader in our community to join them. Um, I did also want to note that I will unfortunately be unable to attend the at-large town hall meeting on the 18th because I will be on the city's lobbying trip to DC, which happened to be scheduled uh, in conflict with one another. Uh, Councilmember Gardner. Uh, thank you, Mayor. A um, couple of things. Uh, one, I will also be unable to attend the at-large uh, town hall meeting next Thursday, April 18th. And then um, secondly, wanted to address item 11A5, uh, decided to pull that tonight. Um, Part of my reasoning for bringing that forward was the city is currently paying uh, several thousand dollars a month to maintain that public call in line regardless of whether or not we have public commenters. And for anyone who follows our, our meetings regularly knows uh, we very rarely, if ever, have um, public commenters call in. Um, uh, but I'm gonna work with the, the city clerk to find uh, perhaps a more cost-effective option um, and, and see if we can make changes that way. Um, uh, one of the other things I wanted to address um, along with that, we've seen um, other cities, Wheat Ridge, Lakewood, Durango, um, others here in Colorado and across the country um, be a victim of uh, racist and anti-Semitic um, call-ins. Uh, uh, through their public call-in lines, and you know, I really wanted to be proactive here in Aurora and, and, and prevent that from happening. Um, that was uh, another thing that I wanted to prevent, but um, <clears throat> either way, I'll work with the city clerk to see if there's a more, um, you know, cost-effective um, option. Um, you know, I know some folks might think it's only a couple thousand dollars a month, but um, to me, uh, taxpayer money is taxpayer money, and we need to be responsible with it. Um, and, and uh, you know, I don't think it's a good use of taxpayer money to pay for a public call-in line when it's not being used. So. Uh, we'll find another option um, and uh, see what other options exist, and uh, so stand by on that. Thank you. 
Councilmember Jarinski. Thank you, Mayor. I will be co-hosting the Ward 4 Town Hall on April 11th, as well as the Ward 5 Town Hall on April 16th. Um, it will be Councilmember Zavonik and I um, doing the at-large Town Hall on April 18th at 6.30 at the Southeast Rec Center. Um, and then I just wanna mention again, the WaterWise event coming up on May 18th at 9 a.m. right here um, at City Hall out in our WaterWise garden. This will be a great opportunity to come um, talk with some vendors, see how you can save some money, different kinds of sprinkler heads. Um, there's gonna be all kinds of vendors out there and really good opportunities to look at um, conserving water and saving money. Hmm. Councilor Zalonik, Mayor Pro Tem Zalonik. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so a few weeks ago, the state legislature, or in the state legislature, bill was introduced, um, House Bill 1437, which is the latest attempt to subvert local control. Um, one of the options that we have uh, in, in Aurora in order to um, avoid being put under the thumb of the legislature is to review whether or not we want to continue to subsidize Arapaho and Adams County um, for prosecuting in our courts um, domestic violence cases that don't reach a felony level. There is only four cities in the state of Colorado that don't currently do that. We do it. Um, and that, of course, is essentially the taxpayers of Aurora subsidizing these two very large counties for handling those cases in our court. So I will be bringing an ordinance to the next public safety meeting to start that conversation of whether or not we should continue to subsidize Rapho and Adams County and um, to ask the question of whether or not we want to allow the state legislature to determine how we um, handle public defense and how we contract or potentially contract out with public defenders because that's what this bill would do is it would subvert our power to do that. In the meantime, I will be bringing forward resolution asking the city manager to actually cost out for us just what the taxpayers of Aurora are subsidizing those two counties to handle these court cases in our court. Councilmember Maria. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I have my monthly town hall that I will be co-hosting with Councilmember Coombs um, on Thursday, April 25th. Um, and we will be at the Aurora Fox Theater. So if you haven't had a chance to visit or tour, um, they have a new executive director. We're hoping we can hear from one of the producers of one of the shows. I wanna extend an invitation for you to come to the Aurora Cultural Arts District and come check out um, a city owned venue. Lots of exciting things happening um, there as well. So you are welcome to join. Um, join us on the 25th. Thanks. Councilmember Sundberg. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, yesterday I learned of a, a small business bar and grill that had a chronic revisit of a dine and dasher that they hadn't seen for a couple of years, someone who repeatedly would dine and dash. And this individual came by and learned from the bartender that he walked on his tab again. And when confronted outside, he physically threatened the bartender. Uh, I, the police were called, but uh, certainly we are understaffed on a, on a Sunday and we couldn't get the guy, but uh, the Dine and Dash ordinance was not for teenagers stealing french fries, it's for people like that who make, uh, make good use of the system and, and continuously steal from restaurants, just a, just a highlight. But I, I wouldn't be sad to see that guy in jail for three days. Uh, Warrior Now and Suicide Event with council members uh, Bergen and, and uh, Hancock to prevent uh, veteran suicide, which is, is a problem in our nation. That was a positive event, raised over $50,000, I believe. And speaking of Warrior Now, they are involved with our Aurora Armed Services, Aurora Armed Forces Wellness Court, which uh, takes someone who is real serious about recovery and wrapping their arms around them with a lot of services. So we have a graduation of an individual on April 22nd who's been sober for a year and going through that. I like to attend those and, and support that system. It's the, it's, it seems overwhelming out there, the number of addictions and problems with people, but it's, a, it's really a celebration when one person gets their life back on track and becomes employed and you gotta celebrate that. I have a town hall on the 18th of this month at the Central Recreation Center at 6.30. We'll be talking about why we don't have a grocery store in Ward 2, mm. and we might have one coming, maybe two of them, uh, out, out to the Northeast. And then we'll be meeting our new library services director as well. So come on out. Thank you. Our Council Member Medina. Thank you, sir. Uh, my town hall is tomorrow <laughs> over at the Central Library. And we have a pretty packed agenda, so I have planning 
Water, and City Manager Jason Bester to talk about how we plan our communities going forward. Thank you. All right, Council Member Hancock. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, uh, along with Council Member Sundberg and Council Member Bergen, we did attend the Veteran Suicide Gala. And what is important about this event is we have a lot of veterans. There was a compelling uh, speech by one of the presenters um, about how veterans return home with a lack of purpose and choose other means to get their needs met. But what um, is really incredible is how this organization wraps around veterans and helps them to reintegrate into society, meet the basic fundamental problems and challenges that they face and help them to be reintegrated and be citizens in the community. Last week, speaking of which, I went to an opening, the mayor and I, at the Xfinity store in Ward 4 on uh, Havana. And, and the great thing about this is the one that's, we have two Xfinity stores in uh, Ward 4. They are the most productive stores in the city, dare I say in the state, and they're very heavily uh, patronized, and it was so much so that they needed to open another one. So we were there and cut the ribbon, which was really awesome. What it tells me is that businesses are starting to come back to our wards, and they recognize that we are doing our best to mitigate crime and help our businesses thrive, which is what we do. We're open for business and we're closed to crime. And it's a slow process, but it's a process that we're committed to doing. Uh, Council Member Jurinsky and I are co-hosting our My Ward 4 Town Hall meeting on the 11th at Denver, uh, at Colorado Early College. I ask you to come. We're going to have 911 there. We're going to talk about the budget, talk about safety and other things that we've been doing uh, in the first quarter um, as a new council person. And so I'm really excited to invite you to come. You are a stakeholder in your own life. And the only way you can do that is if you get involved. So I'm encouraging you to come out on the 11th and let's meet and let's talk. Councilmember Lawson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, for my federal, state, and intergovernmental relations legislative update, there's about 30 days left of the state legislative session with almost over 600 bills that have been introduced. The Colorado Senate on Friday approved the state's $40.6 billion budget, dollar budget for the next fiscal year after adopting nearly 20 amendments during the debate the day before. The spending plan will now head back to a small group of lawmakers that will work to reconcile the differences between the House and Senate versions. Senate Bill 24035, strength, strengthening the enforcement of human trafficking, has been sent to the governor for signature and to be passed into law. The city did support this legislation. Congress is back in session and is set to focus on foreign aid and homeland security. Our next Pfizer meeting is Friday, April 12th. I will be having my uh, my two Ward 5 um, town halls. Um, one is April 20th at Heather Gardens from 10 to 11:45. We will be talking about the budget. And also the Aurora Fire Rescue will be presenting their strategic plan and will be asking for input from the community. And I will also be um, having my town hall April 30th at Central Rec Center from 6.30 to 8. Um, it will be the same topics and I will also give my general updates and Q&A. So you just don't have to be a Ward 5 resident. Anybody can come to these meetings and I hope to see everyone at both of my town halls or either one on, in, on April 20th and April 30th. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> Bergen. Thank you, Mayor. Um, E-470, I sit on uh, their executive board, and uh, it was a v very busy uh, week because we were uh, interviewing candidates for the executive director position. So we um, interviewed three finalists, and I'm happy to announce that Farzan Amid has been selected as the executive director, comes from uh, the Ohio Turnpike, and will be joining us in a few months at E470. Um, again, I attended, of course, the in, uh, Veterans uh, Suicide Gala, um, as my colleagues had mentioned, and um, a lot of our court judges were there as well. And then the state, um, I attended the state um, FBLA awards ceremony, that's the Future B Business Leaders of America, and it was held at the Gaylord, so congratulations to all the students that won awards that evening, uh, or that day, and we'll be moving on to nationals. And then, last but not least, we want to wish Katie a happy birthday today. <laughs> a little birdie told me. 
So Thank that's you. all my I have for my report. Thank you. I, um, I failed to say that uh, I'm having a town meeting on April 20th. Uh, it will be uh, Heather Morris, uh, uh, interim chief of police, uh, giving a presentation. Uh, uh, Alec Otten, uh, uh, chief of uh, Aurora Fire Rescue, uh, giving a presentation. And then a representative from uh, Highline Canal giving a presentation. And so I'll put, um, I need to confirm the, the location and the time, and I'll do that tomorrow on my Facebook page. Thank you. Uh, with all that, meeting adjourned. <coughs>